Welcome back. I'm sorry for the delay in doing my second Dropbox uh, video, but let's get going. We want to talk about several different things today on Dropbox, and we're going to talk about the two different ways to download the program, create folders, send invitations to a Dropbox folder, and send a link to your client that may have a confidential transcript attached or any other way you want to use it. Uh, we'll be looking at some emails and what the user will will see when you send it to them, etc. So let's get going here. I'm going to minimize the camera and get to work. So the first thing I want to do is show you that within my desktop here, I've got Dropbox down here on my taskbar, and I can right click on that once I download the program to launch the Dropbox website. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm already on the internet, so I'm going out in the cloud to my Dropbox area. I'll explain later why that makes a difference, but just so you know, when you download the program, it actually goes into your C drive and you can create documents there offline that will eventually be shared with your folder in the cloud. So what I've got here is I've created a Tech Impact folder right here, and all I did was I went to New Folder, you click on that, you create the new folder. So I'm going to go back to my Tech Impact folder and once you create that you can double click on it and you can upload files to this folder so I uploaded two files already from my uh, case catalyst uh, document file and I sent 28 minutes ago a link and an invitation to myself to join this folder so let's go look at those and see what those look like there in my email box, I'll open my Outlook, and I've created a folder for them called Dropbox. Let's go on down to there, if I can find it. Dropbox folder, it's in my inbox. There we go, Dropbox demo. Okay, the first uh, email I sent myself was, Sandy used Dropbox to share some files with you. So if you want to share anything or collaborate with anyone, this is what the email you would get. So you would click here to view Tech Impact. It would take you out to the web and you would be, have access to these folders. You can also move your cursor up here and share this with somebody else. And you have, when you create a folder within Dropbox, permission rights to share, to allow the users you select to share with other users. So you may not want to do that and probably you wouldn't unless you want your family member to share pictures with other cousins, etc. So there we go. I'm going to go drop out of that, go up to my main Dropbox. So let's go back to my emails actually. The second one I sent was an email that I would send possibly a link to a witness who wants to review their transcript sent electronically. So what I've done is I've gone into my uh, Dropbox folder. Let's go out there again. Oops, excuse me. Let's go up here. So if I'm in a subfolder here, it's in my Tech Impact folder, as you can see, and I want to get back to my main uh, screen, I just click the Dropbox and it'll bring up all the folders I have already set up. You can see I've got quite a bit of stuff on here and I use it quite often. And you can search the Dropbox here for any folder you need, etc. So um, I wanted to show you how I created a link. Let's just do a link with business cards, let's say. So see this get link here? You click on that. This is as if I want to send something to an attorney. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to X out of that. I prefer not to do it that way. What I like to do is go up to the URL site, click on it, control C to copy it, Oops, sorry, that's Control C to copy it. Go out to my Outlook, get a new email, Control V to put the link here, and then I create my email, send it to the witness, attorney, or whoever. This is one easy way for you to uh, send a transcript that may be confidential because you're creating essentially a Dropbox folder that's available for them to access at any time, and you don't have to send a huge file through the email either. So 
and you control that uh, Dropbox file for as long as you want. You can keep it available and you can delete it fairly easily. So let's go back out to my Dropbox. Home. Everything is pretty easily controlled here. You can always do right click and you have all the features uh, that you would have up here on the top of your screen. You can move, copy, rename, delete, etc. And another thing that uh, I wanted to make sure I remember to show you was, let's go offline. We're going to go offline totally. I'm even going to close out. And I'm going to go into my uh, folders box here. And here we go. We've got the list of uh, all my documents. When you download the Dropbox after you first receive an invitation, you'll be sent an invitation that will say, uh, let's say, view the Im Tech Impact folder that I sent you. And then you'll click on that and it will bring up a, a page that has asked for your first name, your last name, your email address. You'll create a password and you'll agree to the terms of Dropbox and then you'll create the account and then download it. Once you download it, it's going to actually put a Dropbox uh, icon and create a folder system within your document files down here or you can have it up here. I choose to put mine up here. So I can click on that and here are all my folders that are within Dropbox. So I can create and do anything I want when I'm offline, not in the cloud, not on the internet. And when I do that and any update any document offline, when I go on to the internet, it will automatically sync. So what you'll see happening is, follow my cursor here down to this Dropbox. See this little green arrow? Right now it says all files up to date. If I were to go online now and I just updated a folder, it would be showing updating, updating, updating one file. So that would take maybe, depending on the size, it could take up to five or ten minutes. If I'm uploading for my Scopus before I leave the deposition a large file, it's going to take me about ten minutes. But just keep in mind if you do close the Dropbox folder before it's fully uploaded and you pack your equipment up and you go home and you get back on the internet, it's going to start uploading automatically right from where you left off. So one misconception is the fact that when you upload it, it's an instant thing. It isn't. You've got to wait for it to upload or you just go about your other work and do whatever you need to do. There's no reason to watch it upload. Now, there's always so com some confusion about how you manage your folders, whether you're, how does it sync? I don't quite get that. Like if I were to back up a, a document from my, a transcript file from my Catalyst program, and I would back it up into my Scopist uh, folder here, Cindy Sandy, um, and I was not on the internet, it's still in Dropbox. What it's doing, it's waiting for you to go on the internet and when you do, it will update in the cloud and she will get a message on her end right down here on the uh, taskbar that says Dropbox folder updated and she'll know that some file has been put in there for her. So once again, there's many different things to use Dropbox for. I eventually want to get into the uh, use with a daily and a scopist and uh, that should be maybe in a couple couple videos down the road. But as of now, I think you've got enough information to successfully uh, do your Dropbox. It's free up to a certain amount of space. Obviously, I've got quite a bit in here. It's not going to be free for me, but it's well worth it. And once again, have fun, and I'll see you next time.